start the recording. Thank you. All right, well, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, back to the class. And uh, let me introduce, reintroduce Thomas Polstra who will be talking today uh, and continuing his talk on applications of big cone Macaulay modules. Awesome. All right, wonderful. And so thank you very much. So uh, yeah, so today's goals is, uh, Right, so the first big goal is uh, I want right, to finish off some applications of big core Macaulay modules and algebras to the homological conjectures specifically. I want to uh, go over a proof that direct summands of regular rings get to enjoy the property of being Cohen Macaulay. Uh, we will do this uh, via the so called vanishing maps of Tor conjecture. And then after that, uh, I'll spend a little bit of time introducing these uh, so-called BCM rational singularities. Uh, Lin Chuan Ma and uh, Carl Schwieb that are studied and defined in terms of big cone Macaulay algebras and how exactly they mimic the, uh, the, uh, the, the theory and the study of F rational singularities and characteristic P. So, all right, so remember the uh, the greatest tool at our advantage is Andre's theorem on the existence of so-called weakly functorial big cone Macaulay algebras. And I wrote it a little bit different here than what I wrote last time. So I wrote it in a bit of a stronger form. Um, so I just wanted to put the strongest form up here. So it just says, just take a map of complete local domains. So, um, and suppose that you're given a big cone Macaulay R algebra. Um, and such algebras always exist for such rings. Um, then for any choice of big cohen macaulay algebra, there's going to be a diagram, uh, this little commutative square that's on your screen, um, so that uh, the, the B sub S is a big cohen macaulay S algebra. So like, not only do you have weakly functorial big cohen macaulay algebras uh, for, for ring maps, R to S, you know, an arbitrary ring map, but you, you have weakly functorial big cone Macaulay algebras based off of any big cone Macaulay algebra on your source ring R. So it's really quite an, uh, uh, an impressive uh, statement. So, okay, so, so we're gonna use this and right, the goal is, is we want to, oh, I'll plug in. So we're going to use this and we want to show, um, so the goal, so or at least the way I'm thinking about the goal here is that if uh, R to S splits, R is CM, then, or excuse me, no, that's the conclusion we want, S is regular. Regular, uh, then R is on Macaulay. Okay. And so the idea behind doing this is uh, what we're going to be able to notice is that by standard reductions, we can reduce to the case R is a complete local domain by standard reductions. Uh, this splitting out of a regular ring, um, we'll get that at least R as a product of domains, but then you can check the cohen macaulay property on each of the products. <clears throat> and then the cohen macaulay property is, of course, a local property, and then the local property is a complete property as well. So it's kind of the heuristic of the reduction there, um, in which case we have Cohen structure theorem. Uh, tells us uh, that R is module finite over a regular local ring. So there exists a Noether normalization. So A to R finite map of complete local domains uh, finite such that uh, A is a regular local ring. Uh, suppose right, that the, you know, say for example, the maximum ideal of A is generated by D elements. Right, then uh, x1 through xd is a system of parameters on R, on R, 
and we want to show, uh, let me just call this X bar, underline X, uh, underline X is a regular sequence. And here's somebody's camera is on in the background. So if that happens to you, if you can just turn it off. And we want to show X bar as a regular sequence on R. Now to do this, so to do this, uh, it is enough to show, it is enough to show or equivalent to show. So the i Kazul homology of R equals zero for all i greater than or equal to one, where h i bar equals i Kazul homology group. But all right, just as a reminder, but one way to 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 realize the ith Kazul homology group of a of a, of a system of parameters on a ring R where that system of parameters is the extension of say the maximal ideal from a regular from a nothing normalization or regular subring um, for which it's finite over. Uh, this is these Kazula homology groups are actually come down to a Tor computation. So you could first just take a free resolution of A mod the maximal ideal or A mod these X's by the Kazula complex on A uh, or uh, with respect to X1 through XD with the, on A. And then that's a free resolution of R mod X or the Kazula complex. You can tensor that with R to obtain the kaz same Kazula complex on R. And then you take homology. But right in that process, we started off with a free resolution of something, we tensored with something, and then we took homology. And so what we're really doing is computing a tor. So this is why the, this, you know, the, these tor computations are going to be showing up. Um, so A mod X bar, actually to kind of mimic the way I'll write things in theorems. Let's put R in the first slot. X bar, right? But this is just the residue field of A. In particular, that is a regular ring. I mean, for what it's worth. But, um, and then, um, but Tori is isomorphic to Okay, so what we're really trying to do is get to some certain Tor modules to vanish, and that's where this vanishing math of Tor conjecture comes in. So, so the theorem. Um, uh, or conjecture. And I'm going to present this in not the most general fashion, but so suppose or let A to R be a finite extension of, uh, say, complete local rings, uh, let's see even do domains, and A is regular. Local ring, let R to S be any ring map to a regular ring S, In particular, we'll apply this later to S, a regular ring for which R splits out of, um, to a regular ring S, but this could be any arbitrary graph, doesn't matter. Then for every uh, uh, A module M, um, the, uh, the, the induced maps of Tor, so the Tor I A, uh, R, M to Tor I A S M is the zero map. Zero for all I bigger than one. So that's that's gonna be our theorem here. So right, take a finite extension of complete local domains, take A to be a regular local ring. So thinking of like a north through normalization for a complete local domain. 
we're going to take R, map it to any regular ring we like, and then for any A module M, we're going to have a, this canonical map of Tor modules, this functorial map of Tor modules has to go away. It's, it's a trivial map. And so here's the proof. And you'll see, the, I think, the true power of not only big cohen macaulay modules in here, but the algebras. So, so here's the proof. So um, right there. All right. So um, the point should go like this. So so there's a reduction to S gets to be a complete regular local ring as, as well. And so the point is, if you look at this Tor module right here, Tor I S M. So, so first and foremost, um, we may assume M is finally generated. So assume M is a finitely generated A module. Um, and this is achieved by a direct ar direct limit argument. So, okay, then, so right, so we can always assume M is finally generated. On top of this, um, when we look at S, we want this map to vanish. The, the vanishing is, uh, you know, we're looking for the image of the map to vanish in this target here, which is a naturally an S module. And something being zero is a local condition. And right, that local condition of being zero can be checked after completion. And that's the, the that's gonna allow us to say that we can also assume as well that S is a complete regular local. Regular. Okay, and now we're going to set up where we can use this uh, Andre's theorem of weakly functorial big cone Macaulay algebra with respect to R and S. All right, so there exists a diagram. All right, so by Andre. So R, S, B, R, B. S, right, so then we have A, right, so, so we have a, this is a finite map, okay, all right, so R to BR, say BCMR algebra, okay, so this implies since A to finite, so since A to R, this implies that uh, A to B sub R, is a BCM A algebra. Okay. And this is where I think one of the true powers of big Cohen Macaulay modules comes in. It's, you know, I think it's very important to remember. So why are Macaulay modules just so useful? Well, the point is, is that over any Noether normalization, that big Cohen Macaulay module is a big Cohen Macaulay module of a regular ring. And big Cohen Macaulay modules over regular rings are automatically flat. And that's uh, that's going to be one of your exercises. So, so A to BR is actually flat since A is regular. Uh, the converse of this statement that if you're actually if, if you only assume A is Cohen Macaulay and you have a flat algebra, it's automatically Cohen Macaulay. That's a that's also going to be an exercise and that's the easy that's a bit easier and so this this statement right here is going to be exercise four okay. um and so the point is then is therefore so tor i a of uh of uh let's see if i get this right so of uh b r has to be zero all I greater than equal to one. Okay. All right. So, so the uh, diagrams above. So there exists commutative diagrams. So we have diagrams, right? 
So we're going to, we have our Tor IA RM mapping to Tor IA SM, right? This is the map we want to be zero. That's what we're trying to get to be zero. We know this maps up to uh, the same Tor module, but now with the big Cohen Macaulay module uh, in the left piece there. All right, and we said that this has to be zero. So for all I agree, so one, right? This is important here. And then we have this score I A B sub S, you know. But now we're gonna use that our hypothesis that S is regular as well. So S to B S is again, I mean, by the same reasoning, but this is a different regular local ring. Um, and so this map, so right here is one to one. This horizontal arrow is the right horizontal arrow is one to one. I'll call that star. So so the star is injected. And that's going to be enough to, to prove what you want. So right, we want to show that uh, this map, say double star is zero. Well, the point is, right, it, this double star, if you map up through this injective map up to this top tor, factors through a zero module, and so it has no other option but to be zero. Uh, so, right, so a couple things happen there, right? So the commutative diagram of the weekly functorial commutative uh, uh, Cohen Macaulay algebras, but then more, more, just as important, very important fact, like if somebody ever asked you for some strange reason, why are big Cohen Macaulay modules nice? Well, they're automatically flat over any no through normalization. That's one of the more. Oh, I think my internet's coming out. Okay, I think I should be back. All right. All right, so now let's prove direct sum ends of regular rings or Cohen Macaulay. So the theorem. So direct sum ends. Regular rings are C. Uh, so, okay, so let's say R to S splits. So S is regular. All right, so standard reductions, right? R is complete local domain. Um, and we can have this module finite extension. So A to R finite. A equals regular local ring. Right, so I'm assuming R is complete local domain here to make this happen. Um, and so what we know is, is that, okay, um, since, uh, so we know, so by vanishing maps of Tor, or we're going to have that, uh, Tor I A of R against say A mod its maximal ideal to Tor I A. S a mod its maximal ideal uh, is the zero map. All right, uh, great, but this thing is actually split. Splits. All right, it's injective in particular, um, but this map is injective, and that is just simply because uh, R to S splits. And so that's uh, that's your proof, right? Because remember, this is the ith Kazula homology on a regular sequence. Zero map, and this is, of course, for all I agree. Okay. That's uh, the proof that direct sum ends of regular rings always get to be called Macaulay. Okay, so uh, so that's that's the uh, end of the discussion. I wanted for the um, homological conjectures, and so I want to move on now to these so-called BCM rational singularities.
Thomas, can I ask you a question real quick? Please. Um, so in the theorem you just proved, you are not assuming anything about the characteristic, correct? That's right. There's no assumptions on the characteristic. Okay. That's right. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Character, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, this is what's so amazing about this theorem. I love this theorem. It's a remarkable statement. Um, and uh, it is truly the case that this theorem and characteristic P is 100 times easier than the other two cases. Be 10 times easier than the characteristic zero case and, you know, maybe a thousand times easier than the next characteristic set up. But like, but, but there's no assumptions on the characteristics of us. And so like, I mean, this could be maps. So, you know, well, yeah, exactly. Exactly what you're saying. There's no assumptions on characters. Um, okay. So BCM rational singularities or big Cohen Macaulay rational singularities. So, all right, so let's recall something about local cohomology and characteristic P. So let's, we are gonna uh, so recall, so let's say uh, a local ring, uh, say dimension D, uh, let's do a prime characteristic thing, okay. right? So the 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 Frobenius induces a Frobenius action on local cohomology. Okay. Uh, and it, I mean, it, it does this in all the local cohomology modules, but I want to focus on the top one. All right, so in particular, I mean, how does this action work? Just as a reminder, so, right, so if we choose uh, identification of this local cohomology modules, of, you know, kind of a limit system based upon a system of parameters, x1 through xd, um, then uh, the class of something that looks like R plus, uh, say, x1 to the t up to xd to the t. You know, what, what, is, what does the Frobenius action do? Well, I mean, shouldn't be too much of a surprise, but the class represented by this element in the direct limit system is going to be mapped to well, the class in the direct limit system represented by R to the p plus x1 t to the p xd t. And um, so, and then so, right, so definition, and, you know, a Frobenius stable submodule, F stable submodule, and containment HDMR is a submodule such that. Uh, the Frobenius on HDMR maps in back to itself. And so the, 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 the theorem here is that, um, so the theorem, right? So some theorems due to Karen Smith. So I'll list a few really important facts here. Um, so let's, let's take RMK to be a complete local domain characteristic P. Um, here's this okay. All right, so, um, so, so maybe fact one is that uh, the tight closure of zero, there's a unique, uh, the tight closure of the zero submodule of the top local cohomology module is a Frobenius stable submodule. And moreover, not only is it Frobenius stable, but it's the largest form with respect to inclusion, right? And this, I mean, you know, you should think about this. We're, we're talking about an Artinian module, and we're finding a module in a class of submodules, namely the Frobenius stable submodules, and that class of submodules emits a maximal element with respect to inclusion. It's a really phenomenal for this reason. So zero star HDMR, which, all right, so... Okay, uh, is the largest for these stable submodules. So, which okay, I'm going to say a couple things here. It's going to be the kernel from okay, 
so the largest, so the, the tight closure is zero, uh, but I'm going to say two important things here. I already said one out loud. I'll write it down in a second. But also, not only is it the largest Frobenius stable submodule, but it's a kernel of a particular map. Uh, it's a kernel from the top local cohomology of module R to the top local cohomology of the absolute integral closure of R. And somehow the union of all finite extensions of R, loader of R, and zero star R, the largest F stable submodule. And in conclusion, uh, a couple things come out of this. So, um, so. If R is CM, the following are equivalent. So what comes out of this is that A, R is F rational, and two, um, And then uh, the other thing that is actually going to come out of this as well, there's another equivalence to just being a fractional, like, uh, which is going to be the following C that HDMR to HDMB is one to one for all uh, BCM R algebras. Right. And so one of the, the key points here to prove B implies C. So let's see why B implies C. So the point is, is this, is that if, uh, if R to B is a BCM algebra, you're gonna have two things happen. One, the kernel, of HDMR to I think HD. there is a typo in C. R to B in the typo. Oh, thank you. You're right. Good job. All right. Thank you so much. Yes. All right. So if R to B is a big Kolmogorov algebra, then the the kernel of this top local cohomology modules is an F stable submodule. Uh, HDMR. This does not require require uh, B to be BCM. This works for any algebra. This is an exercise. And then two, uh, where does the BCM part come in is you know that this thing is a, this map has to be non-zero. And this is an exercise. Right, so let's say you're in this situation of R to R plus induces an injective map from HDMR to HDMR plus meaning you know that R is F rational and that the kernel of that map, not only is it trivial, but it's the largest F stable submodule. So once you know that, you know, this number two, that the map is not zero, and you know that, that the only F stable submodules are zero and the, the whole module that automatically forces, uh, right, the, the, this, this map to, to be injective. So, all right, so thus, Zero uh, or is zero is uh, uh injective one uh zero and HDMI. The only 
F stable so much as. That's, that's all the information you need to know to conclude that uh, ACMR and ACMB has to be injected. And so the, the, it feels to me the right way to, to extend the notion of that rationality in a characteristic free manner to all complete local domains is the following. So definition, so this is a definition due to Lynch on law, Schmid. So a complete, uh, complete, oh poor, uh, clone Macaulay local domain is called uh, BCM rational, standing for big clone Macaulay rational, if for all BCM algebras are to be, the induced map of uh, local cohomology at the top level All right. And so, um, okay. and so, uh, a couple things that happen with these singularities. I only, uh, right, so two things will prove or two things we'll talk about. So, so one exercise, um, so this will be one of the exercises that's assigned to you. So exercise 10 in the notes says that uh, BCM rational implies normal. Okay. Right, and, right, so every F rational ring, for example, is known to be in a normal domain. And so hopefully this type of thing would extend to um, to BCM rational, and it does. And there's a there's a two part exercise here that outlines what to do. And but the one I want to focus on is actually I, it's it's originally in an exercise in the notes, but I want to actually work it out. It's just a it's a really nice proof. It's a very beautiful proof. So so it's going to be exercise eleven, which is going to be the statement that all BCM rational singularities the form. So so for Paul. So a singularity class to form, so something like, um, so a property key of Noetherian rings rings. Uh, so think of you know properties such as Colin Macaulay, Gorenstein, maybe the property being regular, property being F pure, F regular, whatever. Um, some adjective we use. Tribe, you know, local domains. Um, so that property of Noetherian rings is set to the form if um, the form, let me say, in a ring R, or so the form um, in a ring R, if R has property P. Whenever uh, there exists a non-zero divisor X and R such that R mod XR is P. All right, so examples of this. All right, so the properties of say being regular, uh, Gornstein, Cohen Macaulay, um, all deform. Right. If you give me a non-zero divisor in your ring R, and R mod X happens to be a regular local ring, then A, R had to be a regular local ring as well. Um, uh, non-examples, so a famous non-example, F regularity does not deform. Form in general, uh, this is due to Anurag Singh producing some famous counterexamples to this. This was an open problem in tight closure theory that was settled in a negative. Um, but it does deform under certain hypotheses.
So what are rings which are called Q-Gorenstein, this property does deform in. If you, know, if you know what that is, great. If you don't, just don't worry about it. And this is a result due to uh, Avrak, Katzman, and McCrimmon. Um, and then, uh, of course, another very important example is the notion of F rationality deforms as well. And I believe Florian and Eskew talked about this. So if you have a local ring of characters, complete local domain of characters P and R mod X happens to be F rational, meaning all system of parameters are tightly closed in that ring, then that same property is enjoyed by R. And so the proof we'll see of that is we'll just deform BCM rational singularities. And it's a relatively easy proof, I believe. So this is, uh, in the notes, this is exercise. Let's R and K be a B, uh, be a complete local domain and X and R a non-zero divisor. Suppose that R mod XR is BCM rational. Then R is BCM rational. So here's the, uh, the, the solution to this. So. All right, so let's R to B be a BCM algebra. We want to show um, HDM R to HDM B is one of them. Okay. Now, R to B is a BCM algebra, meaning that B is a balanced big Cohen Macaulay module over R, meaning if I give you any system of parameters um, on R, then it's necessarily a regular sequence on. In particular, when you look at R mod, or excuse me, B mod X, that has to automatically be a balanced big Cohen Macaulay algebra for R mod X. That's what that's going to then imply. So notice that R mod XR to B mod XB is a BCM R, R mod XR algebra. And so by assumption, we get to know that this map is injective. Okay. All right, and so we'll use this. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at a short exact sequence. All right, so let's do the kind of standard short exact sequence involving a non-zero divisor. And the point is, for this short exact sequence, we can put on top of it another short exact sequence. Okay. All right. So now we have this short exact sequence, uh, this commutative diagram of short exact sequence. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the resulting commutative diagram of local cohomology modules. So, so a little proposition. This will be a little uh, segue into something else for a second. Um, so if M is BCM, over you know RMK, you know, control dimension of M or of R is D. Then this implies all lower local cohomology modules are zero. Um, but careful, careful, careful here. The converse statement is not necessarily true. Um, you have to be careful with this. 
So converse is not necessarily true, but there is at least one very important case where this is true, where the converse can be turned around. Uh, and it's, it's a very important case, which is if, uh, right, so if you look at the proof of, right, that Gennady is going to be talking about here, in a, you know, after me, of R plus being big cone Macaulay, it, you can reverse this statement for R plus. So, so this type of statement is reversible, obviously, for finitely generated modules. Um, this kind of the whole theory of Cole Macaulay modules is building up those types of statements. But once you throw in a non-finite generation assumption, things get weird. But, but, uh, but I do want to emphasize that this is reversible uh, for m equals to r plus. That's a kind of an interesting statement there to me at least. Um, like if you want to prove R plus is big Macaulay, it's actually enough to show all the lower local cohomologies actions. But that type of statement isn't true for any module, just, just R plus. All right, but okay, so let's use this proposition. We have lots of banishing of local cohomologies, and we're going to apply the proposition to this big old commuted diagram. And the thing that we're going to keep in mind is that everything in sight, R, B, R mod X, and B mod X, are big cohen macaulay modules you know, over the rings that we're studying them over. So, so we apply proposition, proposition to the diagram to get a commutative diagram of local cohomology modules. And so, so, I, so let me just redraw the diagram to begin with. So zero R times X R. All right, so this is the diagram we start with. And so the diagram we end up getting will look like this. So, right, we start going, work our way up a local cohomology chain, and the first non-vanishing one will be the D minus one terms on the R mod X and the B mod X. This will map into HDM with B. This will map into our multiplication by X onto HDM B. All we get to assume is, is that this left arrow is one one. All right, so we're going to take, <clears throat> let me call this map phi, right? And we're trying to show that phi is one to one. All right, so let eta be an element at the top of the homology model of R and suppose that phi of eta equals zero. All right, um, so what we can do in this assumption, so imagine if eta is not zero. So let's say we're in a situation where V is not injected. If eta is non-zero, there exists a T in the natural numbers such that X to the T eta is zero, right? Okay, right, so, right, so we have this element, uh, Eta living inside this local cohomology module. And we know right, every element of a local cohomology module is multiplied, but is killed by high powers of elements from the maximal length equal. And so what we can do is, all right, we look at this element eta, we know that there's a T so that X to the T eta kills it. And so what we'll do is pick T minimally. So pick so pick T minimal, uh, replace eta by X to the T minus one eta, and assume that 
x eta equals zero, right? All right. But the point is, right, if x eta equals zero, that means this green eta here is being mapped to x eta equals zero. And so it actually belongs in this kernel or this local cohomology module here. And now you can do a little diagram chase, right? You have a one-to-one -one map here, one-to-one -one map here. And so if eta was non-zero inside this module, the image here cannot be zero either. And so that's, that's how I'll just conclude. What's going on? Can't scroll down anymore. Oh, I've reached the end of the page. So a simple diagram chase, excuse me for the poor writing here, finishes the argument. I think with that, it is a perfect place to, to stop. Wow, well, thank you, Thomas. Um, do we have any questions? Please go ahead and ask. Uh, I don't see any questions. So let's go ahead and thank Thomas for uh, several beautiful talks and uh, put, put those claps up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I never know how to respond to those when I'm the talker, the speaker. No, no, no. Um, no those things are odd. <laughs> yeah.